Okay, today uh, we're going to diagnose one of these odometer zero instrument clusters that we got in. Uh, this board had a couple of other issues with it, uh, but I've already fixed one of the two of them. Uh, it had a capacitor over here that was uh, nice and corroded, obvious giveaway, uh, dead short across it, so it wasn't powering up. The 5 volt rail was being pulled dead, uh, so flicked that off the board, didn't replace it, I just flicked it off the board, it's a, just like a decoupling capacitor there, uh, just, I'm not worried about it, I'm not putting it back on there, because this one's not one I'm selling to a customer or something, uh, it's not even my board, so, uh, this, and then right here, somebody had shorted a, uh, light out on there and fried that guy. Uh, I'll probably dig a hole in the board and go ahead and fix that for for Jeff, but uh, yeah, that one I'm not gonna bother fixing. Uh, I don't think I don't know if I have any parts boards to pull it off of. All uh, right, but yeah, we're gonna diagnose the odometer zero going on here. So uh, I'll have another video coming up soon where I've I have been replacing these microcontrollers. I have successfully programmed one. Um, I'm going to successfully program two before I do a video. Well, I've actually programmed three. I've programmed one blank one and one not blank one, uh, but I've also damaged a couple of them, so I want to make sure it works before I do a do a video on it. Uh, but the, the hint on the damage is I was using the wrong driver, and I'm almost 100% sure that damaged them. This, this board would not, like, program at all for me once I figured out what the right driver was so I figured I'd use this one as uh, my test subject to if it's working right because uh, I don't know if it's some sort of noise going on in here or something but the uh, microcontroller keeps getting interrupted while programming so this one will be that test subject I'm not doing that in this video but I wanted to update y'all there's been success in there uh, huge huge shout out and thank you to uh mike who's been in my email emailing me a whole bunch about these uh he definitely um if, if he wants it i've already offered it to him once he didn't accept it he didn't give me his paypal information but if he wants the uh uh the bounty i put out on it yeah, i'm i'm happy to pay him it but uh he he did not accept it yet but maybe you'll see this video and, and accept it uh but all right so back to this this one, what we're doing in this video is diagnosing odometer zero, what the hell's going on, because I program, I put a, a new microcontroller on one and then programmed it, and it's still at odometer zero, uh, so what, what's going on there? So let's, let's diagnose this. This one still has its original microcontroller on it, didn't change it, um, and we'll look and see what's going on. So as you can see, I got my logic analyzer wired up. We have uh, yellow is going to the chip select line, orange is going to the data out line, uh, gray is the data in, and when that's data out, that's data out from the EEPROM to the microcontroller and this is data in from the microcontroller and to the EEPROM and the blue one is the clock because those are really all that we have to have other than power which I've already checked power it's got five volts and ground uh, this is just a ground for the logic analyzer because you have to ground things to it uh, I use the logic analyzer to do this video because this is a super cheap tool you can get eight dollars off of banggood amazon all day long you know ebay all of your favorite retailers have this thing uh it's a clone of the Sally that was made in the um early 2000s uh and it's just got uh ancient uh one of those intel like little processors in there god i can't even think of it it's it's from the 80s like ancient processor inside there well at the heart of it to make it work but uh, basically what this thing is just a parallel port that converts to usb but all right let's uh let's take a look at it on this screen here well first let's power it up so that way you can see that uh w what the condition is we have an eprom on there and boots up and then as odometer zero and I flashed that EEPROM it's a brand new EEPROM we know it's a good working EEPROM with a good flash on it so we, we know that's not the problem we've replaced a microcontroller we know the microcontroller is not a problem so let's uh, continue down this uh, this rabbit hole and figure out what is going on here 
Okay, so uh, on this screen here, we have PulseView. PulseView is an open source software that you can use with this logic analyzer. I highly recommend using PulseView instead of Saley's uh, software because it's kind of piracy. You know, they, if you don't have a Saley device, they get so yeah. Don't don't use Saley's advice with. Uh, uh, software with a clone device. It's just not fair. PulseView is open source and free, and it puts its own driver on there too, so it's not using the clone driver, so you're in clear waters with this. Uh, let's go ahead and just click run here and power up the thing and see what we get. Alright, so we have uh, all of the lines stay high per uh, sorry not all of the lines we have data coming across these two and that so let's go ahead and stop running pulse view and just kind of go over it see what we have going on i'm going to turn it back off okay so we see blue which we know that's the clock um the clock is working correctly um the data in so the microcontroller is trying to talk to it uh and that's just staying high and this this is also when it powered up just to ignore anything before that uh data out is just staying high all the time which is what it's supposed to do when it's not talking these talk on low um and chip select is staying high all the time and if you're familiar with this let me see yep i got the data sheet pulled up um when you are talking to it you pull it low for chip select so see chip selects low and then you know instructions bid address all that uh goes on clock just does its thing while it's doing this and then goes back high uh, so uh that's that's what we got going on here we we know we don't have chip select which is again that pin one we talked about this earlier uh which is yellow so yep so we know our issue is with chip select because the microcontroller is trying to talk to it. it's giving it a clock um it's not like it's, this isn't like a oscillator clock. Uh, just look up SPI clocks to get more information about how the clock works. Um, and then this would just be bytes where it's trying to talk to it. Uh, obviously, we could get a whole lot better uh, resolution with a oscilloscope instead of a logic analyzer. But this is we went with the oscilloscope. I mean, the logic analyzer because it's cheap and easy for anybody to get. I highly recommend. This is a great diagnostic tool to have. Um, okay, so we know we need to chase the chip select line, so I'm going to go ahead and take the logic analyzer off. Uh, don't think we're going to need it anymore for the video because uh, we we know what we're chasing. Okay, I'm going to just put this voltmeter multimeter uh right here so that way y'all can see it and hear it uh uh my bk precision is just not loud enough for y'all to hear uh, the bk precision is what i normally use it's just one that i have that's good for videos all right so we're just gonna use continuity and figure out what's going on um so we already know it has the five volts for it and it uses a little so uh on this side would be to five volts so there you go uh, that that side should just be five volts there and then this side is where it has a trace that goes from there to right there so we know we have continuity to that trace Let's see trace just jumps back up right here we have continuity there and see it's one of these guys right that one all right so we have continuity there um it comes back up somewhere over here. Don't remember exactly, but let's flip it over because it's a pretty long distance uh, to check there. See if there's anything going on, on the other side. So it's the group of three. It's the top one, and then there's the long line. So it's going to be that one right there. And I'll just verify that I'm getting the right one by leaving a probe on and looking at the back. Sorry, you aren't really going to see this, but all right, found the right one. So that's one we got contact to there so now let's go to the other end of this trace and we don't have anything yeah no continuity so let's take a closer look at this trace and see what we see hopefully i can catch it with the camera here 
So, I might have to get the microscope out. It's been a while since I've had the microscope in a video. But it looks like we have a tiny, tiny little bubble in it right there. So, we'll get the microscope out and see if we can find an actual scrape there. Because we cannot see it with that camera. Okay, so uh, I've already started to kind of look at this under the microscope. Uh, just because I thought that... Oh, let me find it. Where? All right, scooting down. All right, too low. Let's go back up. There's a little tiny nick that I thought might be it from the naked eye. So yeah, that that little nick right there. Uh, from the naked eye, I thought that was probably uh, my trouble area right there, because this is the trace we're following. Uh, but after glancing at the microscope definitely not the issue so here i think is where our actual issue lies which you know i mentioned before that this had a capacitor right around here uh so a little bit above where we're looking right now just kind of that direction um that was super corroded and uh flicked it off the board that made it work again just the the whole circuit board because it was pulling the five volts down uh so it looks like we have a little more corrosion damage here, so I'm going to scrape this a little bit and see if we can find any uh, metal, any copper left there, So, or if it's all just corrosion. So let me look under the microscope myself here. Alright, so yeah, definitely some copper left. Let's see where we quit having it though, because we don't have continuity from there. Let's uh, check this again. doesn't seem to have continuity from here to there. We seem to lose our continuity in between there. So that's the last spot we have continuity. So we'll just uh, run a little jumper there. So let's uh, try soldering that. Let's put some flux on there and see if we can get something out of there. Looks like, yeah, oh, I just hit my microphone on there. Hopefully that didn't come across loud. It looks like this whole via may just be gone and we may have to poke a hole in the board here and run through it, but let's see. Just looks like that, that whole via may have just corroded away. This, this may not be an easy operation. Uh, it's always fun to dig into the circuit board. So let's see. Okay, looks like we'll be digging. Let's uh, let's get the razor blade and really start to dig at it here. It's been a while since I've dug a hole in a circuit board. Actually, normally use a small drill bit to do this, but I'm gonna first see if I can salvage it from some point over here before I have to run the drill bit through this via and just run a jumper to the other side of the board. I know a lot of people just go to one of the holes nearby, but I, I like to just drill out the vias and run the jumpers that way, but this is personal preference.
off camera just because it's kind of hard to work on the microscope uh, and record at the same time. I uh, went ahead and just drilled the new hole through this, uh, just using a exacto knife to make a larger hole, and then just kind of this this little guy right here. That's what I always use to kind of cut through them. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, run this jumper through here. I already uh, uh, what do we call it? Uh, tend the uh, board there. So let's get this guy in there and solder it down. Put some flux on there. I'll trim that leg later. Just get that flux on there and some solder. And this should be a nice, easy little repair here. And we will see from here if this fixes our um, odometer air we had. Let's see, grab some tweezers and hold that steady. It'll be a whole lot easier. All right, and that's a good repair. There we go, so I can trim that in a minute. Let's flip it over, because I just want to test this first, and then we can trim it and get this in focus here. There we go. Well, you're in focus on the top. Let's scroll it down to where we need it. There we go. And that's the other side of this. Oh, we went too far on the focus. There we go. Yes, my microscope camera is a tr trinocular, not a semi uh, semifocal. So the semifocal gives you all three at the same time. I only get two at a time. So uh, when I'm soldering uh, while recording, I'm only getting to see through one eye instead of two eyes with a semifocal we'll let you see through all of them all right so let's uh trim that because that's pretty close to the 12 volts for the led there well for the light and let's give it one more trim so that way nobody accidentally gets it in the future there we go that should be good all right let's um just go ahead and power this thing up and see so let me switch my camera back so we're just going to power it up and test it with the board because there's everything on here uh we shouldn't need the uh logic analyzer unless we have problems so let's see what happens so unknown drivers this one has steering wheel controls and there we go it's now reading the eprom so yep our only problem was that corroded out via you can let's zoom in here without the microscope. Uh, I have the arrow pointing there, so that way when I send this back to uh, uh, Jeff, he'll know that that's where those capacitors are missing. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, yeah, there's two capacitors missing off the board there. They were uh, super corroded and shorted, uh, shorted the five volt rail to ground, which was causing this to not boot up. Uh, and it was a um, intermittent short though, because they were super corroded, so it didn't make contact all the time. Um, it replaced, uh, just flick those off the board because you don't need them for, for testing here and uh, just replace that via. Uh, this still needs that same exact thing done, you know, just dig out this via right here and uh, run a jumper through there to fix uh, this. So that, that one's not going to have power right there because somebody shorted it right there. So that, that via is, is also blown out. That's where I have a lot of practice doing that repair like this exact repair to these kind of things where people try to replace uh, the bulbs themselves and somehow they manage to short them out and it just blows out the trace uh, for some reason it's always uh, over here <laughs> that I get it uh, and it'll blow out the trace over there um, but yeah that's uh, that's really all there is to this video. I should have another video here in the next day or so. I need to put a microcontroller on this board and uh, test it and make sure it works. Uh, same same kind of repair needed on here for the odometer zero. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's that's it. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video. Uh, I'm out of EPROMs, so uh, Jeff won't get any more <laughs> EPROMs out of me. I need to order some more. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is uh, uh, th that's it. So I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope you liked it.